Hi everyone. So today I want to talk about a topic that's really not discussed very much, and that is the interplay of genetics and the microbiome. So we know that diet and nutrition play a large role in shaping the microbiome and deciding which bacteria can grow, but we don't really talk about how our unique genetic predispositions can kind of encourage the growth or the inhibition of growth of certain bacteria in the gut. And so to kind of introduce this topic, I want to talk about an enzyme that's known as galactoside 2 fucosal transferase. And there are actually two forms of this enzyme. The one is called galactoside 2 fucosal transferase 1, also known as FUT1. And the second is galactoside 2 fucosal transferase 2, also known as FUT2. So FUT1 is responsible for allowing our red blood cells to express antigens associated with our blood type. So for example, if you have type A blood, you'll have type A antigen on the surface of your red blood cells because FUT1 allows your, your red blood cells to secrete that antigen and place it onto the cell surface. Um, conversely, FUT2 actually allows this process to happen in a bunch of other cell types. So basically any tissue in the body that has mucus, um, this includes the gut, the lungs, the mouth, the eyes, um, any of these secretions in the majority of people, they will also contain blood type antigen. Um, so in about 80% of people who have a functioning copy of FUT2, which is the enzyme responsible for allowing these blood type antigens to be secreted into the, mucosal, uh, the mucosa of different organs. In the other 20% of people, they actually have loss of function mutations in FUT2. So in this 20% of people, you know, you're not able to secrete these antigens into your mucus. And this actually has very striking implications for the microbiome. So the microbiome loves to feast on different polysaccharides, which are sugars that are basically linked together into complex chains. And these blood type antigens are examples of polysaccharides. And so in the gut, for example, you have these mucosal secretions with blood type antigen. This antigen will actually feed certain bacteria in the gut. Specifically, uh, bifidobacteria love to eat this type of antigen. And bifidobacteria we know are associated with a lot of benefits for the gut and for health in general. Um, actually, this uh, genre of bacteria allows other bacteria that create short chain fatty acids like butyrate, which feeds the gut, li the gut lining and also modulates the immune system and has anti-inflammatory effects. So bifidobacteria actually supports the growth of these other bacteria, making it a very key species for maintaining homeostasis in the gut. And so people who do express FUT2 that's functioning will have lots of this antigen around that bifidobacteria can eat and you'll see if you do uh, microbiome sequencing in these individuals that you basically have higher levels of bifidobacteria in the gut. Not only is this beneficial in the acute term for, you know, anti-inflammatory effects and properly feeding the gut cells, but it's also important for preventing the development of chronic diseases such as ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel disease, even colon cancer. So there's a lot of implications here. In individuals that lack a functioning copy of FUT2, they basically do not contain antigens in their mucosal secretions, so bifidobacteria populations are gonna be naturally lower in these people. And these people are also susceptible to develop, developing inflammatory bowel diseases and other issues related to inflammation in the gut um, and in the body in general. And so for these individuals, it's super important to take a dietary and supplementation approach to support bifidobacteria growth and colonization of the gut. So for example, um, you could be prioritizing foods that contain lots of prebiotics that feed bifidobacteria. These would include green bananas, raw oats, um, anything with resistant starch. So cooked and cooled beans. Um, if you cook rice with some sort of oil or butter and then cool it down, that facilitates the formation of resistant starch. So eating cooked and cooled rice, also cooked and cooled potatoes with some sort of fat source. And if you add vinegar, it actually further will potentiate that. So something like potato salad will actually have a decent amount of resistant starch. 
prioritizing these foods as well as supplements such as tuficosal lactose, like layer origin cells, um, other prebiotics such as fructo oligosaccharides and galacto oligosaccharides, also known as FOS and GOS. These will all kind of serve as prebiotics to feed specific strains of bacteria in the gut, including bifidobacteria, and really support their populations um, in the absence of this blood type antigen in the mucosal secretions. Um, so that's really like some uh, great starting points for people who do find that they are in the 20% that lack a functioning copy of FUT2. To determine whether or not you have a functioning copy, you basically want to use something like 23andMe data. And um, I think we'll link you to the blog post that I wrote on this topic where it, it says the specific um, locus in your genes that you want to look at. And then it will tell you the, um, the allele present at that locus. And basically, I believe it's if you have an AA phenotype, then you are... Um, one of the 20% of people that don't have a functioning FUT2. And if you have GA or GG at this locus, then you are a functioning secretor, which is, um, what, is what is known if, if you have a functioning copy of FUT2, you're known as a secretor, whereas non-functioning copies are non-secretors. So if you have GA or GG, you're a secretor, and your bifidobacteria populations will be naturally bolstered um, whereas if you have an AA at this locus, you're basically going to want to prioritize these supplement and dietary strategies to support your gut bacteria. Um, and in addition, you know, supplementing with things like tuficosal lactose will be important for people who, especially mothers, um, because they cannot, they essentially can't produce tuficosal lactose in their breast milk. So mothers who are non-secretors would want to make sure that they're potentially supplementing their children, their babies, with tuficosal lactose as well as themselves to support their gut um, while they're breastfeeding so that their babies are getting the best nutrition possible. So I hope this is kind of an illuminating discussion and, and will generate lots of questions. So drop your questions below in the comments and um, personally, my genetic testing report didn't spit out my secretor status, so I gotta stay tuned to, to see what mine is. But if you have 23andMe data, that locus should have been sequenced, so you can check it out, um, read the blog post to find out the location, and you can go from there. Hope everybody has a great day. Take care.